a simple project. We're going to learn how to do the faux leather technique using the regarding dahlia stamp set. Here you see a card front that measures five and a quarter by four inches. So I'm going to go ahead and punch three holes in each corner creating a V and that's just a very simple way to embellish your card. I'm doing this ahead of time. You can do it afterward as well. Just using a square on my template from the Essentials Map Pack by Stampin' Up! and a paper piercer. And I'm taking a two by four and three quarter inch strip of sandy Sahara sand cardstock, and I'm crumpling that up. I'm using really the sweat from my palms, and I want to get a lot of crinkle in that, so I'm going to really work the paper here. I'm going to bring it back and forth. You can see I'm squeezing it in between my palms there. I'm going to bring it back out and see where I might need to add a little bit more. It's looking pretty good on the right side, but the left side needs a little bit more character to it. So I'm just going to work that paper. You don't want to overwork it as your ends will start to come apart. You straighten that back out. And that's really giving you that worn leather look. Isn't that great? Now when you're doing this, it becomes very unfriendly to work with, so you're going to definitely need to use the liquid glue when you're adding other pieces of paper. We have a couple of very narrow navy blue strips here. They are 3 16 of an inch, and I have a half inch by, I think that's about 2 inches of cherry cobbler. I'm going to place that at one end. I'm just going to adhere that down. I don't need to worry about it being too perfect. The top is going to be actually covered up by a banner. So I want to make sure that it lines up perfectly with the edge on the left as well as the edge on the bottom. And there you go. That's the way it's going to go. Now these strips I'm just adding a little tiny bit. Like I told you they're 3 16 of an inch and they're going to go on a diagonal. So I'm just going to add a thin row of liquid glue and then attach those to my textured paper that I just created. Now if I were to use any other adhesive such as a snail or any sort of a runner, it really wouldn't stick, especially if you live in a place that has humidity of any, any sort. So you definitely want to use a liquid glue that can form a pretty strong bond. So I'm going to go ahead and press that down, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually flip the piece of paper over so that I can almost burnish it from the other side. Really kind of press that into there. And then we'll just snip those edges off. And this is really based off of a sketch from the Mojo Monday Challenge blog. And yesterday I actually wrote a blog with all of the step-by-step -step details as to how I made this card. Today I thought I'd film the video for you so you can watch me create the faux leather technique, which is, as you just saw, a very, very simple technique. I'm just going to snip those off, and then we're going to go ahead and adhere that piece down to our white card front. I want to keep an even amount of space to the left, right, and bottom there. You'll see I'm leaving about a quarter of an inch. When you work your paper as I did for the, for the faux leather, it's going to shrink up just a little bit. So if you needed it to be a precise measurement, just know you'll probably lose about a sixteenth of an inch, maybe even a little bit more. So we're going to fit that in there, and then we're going to move on to our next piece. Now to really get that adhered down, I'm going to do the same thing I did when I was adhering the blue strips. I'm going to flip that over, just kind of really press that down. And you just have that perfect little something by using the faux, the faux leather. You can see I'm going to, since I punched those holes in advance, you'll see me at various points just kind of run my paper piercer through there. Now I'm taking the Versamark watermark ink and I'm going to use one of the greetings from this Regarding Dahlia stamp set. I think it says Hello You and I'm just going to stamp that onto a one and a quarter inch piece of navy blue and it's one and a quarter by two inches 
and I'm just going to create a banner here. So I want to emboss this in white. It's almost like a red, white, and blue card. I love this color combination. The Sahara Sand with it is the perfect color. It's the perfect neutral. Works really well with it. I'm just going to get that back in there. And we'll quickly emboss, emboss this banner and then create the edges. If you need a few tips on how to create banners, be sure to watch my video on using three different ways to create a custom banner. You'll find it on the YouTube channel or if you're on the blog, you can also just go into the search box and type type how to how to make a banner or just banners and it'll probably come up. So today I'm going to use a hexagon punch and we're going to let that dry first because we don't want to do it right away. That's still a little wet, a little, we had just melted all that powder. So I'm going to move on to the flower first and then I'll come back and create the banner. So I'm using cherry cobbler here and I'm inking up that really large dahlia stamp. Because it's so big, I'm going to actually stamp it upside down and then burnish it onto my cardstock. And then I'll lift that up and then we're going to actually cut it out. Now yesterday's card, I did this with a two and a half inch circle. So I didn't really get all the edges of the flower. Today, I thought that I would actually cut the flower out. So I'm not gonna show you how to cut the whole flower out, but just to show you in the beginning that I'm leaving just ever so slight an edge of white cardstock there. And that's really to help that pop off. You can see that white being left behind. You don't really want to go on the inside of that line or on the line. So there's my cutout flower. And now I'm going to punch my banner quickly. Just place that in. And we're going to snip the other side off. It's just a little too, too long. I want to shorten that up just a little bit. Now because we have that really great textured paper, if I were to just glue this down, if it, the part that's on the Sahara sand is raised. So I'm going to use some Stampin' Dimensionals, you can use foam tape as well, for the top of the flower. And I'm going to attach the rest of the flower with liquid glue. So I'm just going to take that top part, and you saw me pointing to right there. Just a few. And liquid glue on the bottom. And then I'm going to also do the same thing with the banner. Because I don't have a lot of space to work with and I don't want my banner to stand up on that cherry cobbler at all, I'm going to actually place my Stampin' Dimensionals onto the white cardstock. Now I am spacing, being aware of how I'm spacing this, I want to leave a quarter of an inch of white at the top and that will help complete the card spatially. That way the top, bottom, left and right all have a quarter of an inch border. It's just a lot easier for the eye. It looks a lot more appealing. Banner is going to go to the edge of the card front. I'm taking one dimensional here, and as I told you, I'm going to cut that in half. And we're going to place that directly on the card where that banner is going to go. It's too hard to do it the other way, so this way, when I place it down, they are perfectly placed and they won't be raised up on the red. I'm going to add some liquid glue for the rest of it. And then the final part to this card, once we have that down, the final part to this card is to actually raise the panel itself with eight dimensionals. Be sure that you're using enough. Here you can see the dimension that the flower and the banner have there. Be sure you're using enough dimensionals. Too many people don't, they only put four down and when the recipient gets the card it's completely squashed and you lose the effect of the dimensionals. <clears throat> so you see me do a diamond shape in the center and the square around the outside, a rectangle around the outside and that's going to help ensure that my card arrives as I intended. Had a little glue that seeped out there. I'm just going to place that down. And that's pretty much it. It's a great project. Be sure to click on the link to see the pictures on the blog if you didn't get a chance to see them. 
And I'm also going to show you, there is the other card done with the circle. It's a totally different look. You pick and choose which one you like better. I added the three pearls on the one with the circle. I felt it needed it, and that's certainly what the sketch called for. Thanks for joining me today, and I hope to see you maybe in one of our classes. We have a great technique course that just launched. Be sure to check that out. It's Creative Techniques, and uh, join our technique community. Thanks for watching. Click the subscribe button, leave me a comment below, and be sure to like this video. Bye-bye.